In this segment, we continue our theme of looking at reactions of alcohols, and we focus on how we can go about transforming alcohol molecules into alkanes. The good news about this segment is the reactions are each reactions that you have seen in some context before. So this should be review if you recall back to earlier segments. So let's take a look at how we're gonna go about converting an alcohol molecule into an alkane. And what I'm going to tell you is that it's very rare to have reactions that will take an alcohol and convert it directly to an alkane, converting an OH group to a hydrogen, in other words, through reduction of the organic molecule. So it's very uncommon to see this occurring in one step. What typically happens is that the alcohol molecule is first subjected to a dehydration reaction to give an alkene, and then that alkene molecule is readily reduced using hydrogenation. So both of those reactions that we've seen before, we are going to review here to illustrate how we can go about converting an alcohol molecule into an alkane by doing this two-step reaction series where we start with alcohol dehydrogenation first by treating with acid, such as sulfuric acid, to give an alkene, and then we take that alkene and subject it to a hydrogenation reaction using hydrogen gas and a metal catalyst in order to give a carbon-carbon single bond of an alkane. So let's look at these two reactions that we do in series in more detail here. Let's start with an example problem to illustrate how we can ultimately take a starting material that's an alcohol and convert it into an alkane product. So we're gonna start with this particular alcohol, which we would call cyclopentanol. We'll treat it with our reagent that allows dehydration, and that's typically sulfuric acid. So H2SO4 acts as the catalyst of this reaction for dehydration. What will happen here in the reaction, as a reminder of the mechanism here, we'll walk through this quickly. Um, if you need a more thorough review of this topic, go back to unit 60, video number 60, covers dehydration reactions in detail. So we protonate the alcohol group because we have acid present and the first step of mechanisms, generally if you have acid present, is going to be to protonate something from the organic molecule. So what will result from that protonation step with our sulfuric acid is creating water as a leaving group here. So we have H2O, lone pair of electrons, and positive formal charge on that oxygen atom. Then what's going to happen is that the leaving group will leave as water comes in and takes a proton from the beta position. So we refer to this as a beta elimination step. So what we'll see go on is that water is going to come in, grab a proton at the beta position. This is where we'd follow Zaitsev's rule if we had an unequally substituted alcohol starting material. But here our alcohol starting material is equally substituted. So it doesn't matter whether we go for the beta position here or the beta position over here, we'll get the same product one way or the other. So again, water's gonna come in, grab that proton. So the water is acting as a base. The carbon hydrogen bond right here is going to break. The electrons from that are gonna come down to make a carbon-carbon double bond at the same time as the water leaving group leaves. So the purpose of the protonation here was so that at the leaving group leaving step, we are breaking away water, which is a relatively stable product of this reaction, rather than trying to break away OH minus, which would be a relatively unstable product of this reaction. We'll go ahead and fill in then our carbon-carbon double bond that results from this, giving us our final product of our dehydration reaction. So everything that we've just looked at here, we would describe as the dehydration portion of the reaction. After the dehydration has taken place, then what's going to happen is that our alkene that's resulted from the dehydration is going to be subject to that hydrogenation reaction. So once we add our hydrogenation reagent, which hopefully you recall is hydrogen and a metal catalyst such as platinum, palladium, etc that is going to result in the addition of those two hydrogen atoms across the carbon-carbon double bond to give us an alkane molecule in the final product here. So that is our way to go about taking an alcohol starting material and creating your intended alkane product. And we would describe this as certainly a reduction reaction overall in this pathway because we're lowering the number of carbon-oxygen bonds in the molecule 
and we are increasing the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds in the molecule, thereby qualifying this as a reduction through the two-step reaction starting with dehydration and then continuing with hydrogenation or reduction. So I encourage you in this example problem to try to do this on your own and then check your answer to see whether you got to the mark or not. We're predicting the major product of the reaction shown here. I'm going to write out first the product that would result from the first reaction, that is our dehydration reaction that we recognize is occurring because we have acid mixed with our alcohol. So if we kind of were to limp our way through this reaction, we didn't exactly know what was going on. We expected the first thing to happen would be that we would get protonation of the alcohol oxygen atom because of the fact that we have an acid present. So we protonate that oxygen. And then from there, what we've done is created a good leaving group by protonating that oxygen because water would be what's available now to break away rather than OH minus being available to break away. And so what's going to happen at the next step of the reaction is that we have water swoop in and it's going to grab a beta proton, so a proton here or one of these three protons here at the same time that the leaving group leaves and the carbon-carbon double bond is created. So we bring in our water here. As we bring in our water, water attacks at the beta position right there. Carbon-hydrogen bond breaks. The electrons come over to make a carbon-carbon double bond as the leaving group departs. So the leaving group departure then will usher us into our final product here of this reaction where we'll have our four carbon chain with a methyl group branching off of carbon two and our carbon-carbon double bond installed right there. And keep in mind that here we are following Zaitsev's rule to do this elimination step in that we are taking the hydrogen atom, the proton here, from the carbon atom that's going to allow us to create the most substituted final alkene product. If instead we took the hydrogen atom over here, that would result in the carbon-carbon double bond going right here, which would be a less substituted alkene than the option that we've gone with. So we want to create the most alkyl substituted alkene possible, which is what we've done there. So our product resulting from step one of the reaction is going to be this guy. And then we keep in mind that our hydrogenation, H2 and metal catalyst, is just going to convert that alkene group into an alkane. So therefore, step two, our hydrogenation, is going to give way to this, our final alkane product that would result from this two reaction series. So this is going to be our final product right there. So what we've talked about here overall should be really useful tricks for taking an alcohol group and converting it into an alkene as the final product by doing this two-step series of first starting with a alcohol dehydrogenation reaction and then doing the reduction reaction or hydrogenation, it's also called, of the resulting alkene product.